Now, back to WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. Fans of Megan Meyer, Megan Meyer, top alcohol dragster, world champion. Going to be on WFO Radio Podcast just seconds from now. I'm Joe Costello, your podcast host. Hopefully you will subscribe to NHRA Nitro on WFO Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere you get your podcasts, you can find WFO Radio. We've been doing it for 10 years, and we have just got all the champions over the past month and a month ahead we are going to delve into every champ including top alcohol funny car top alcohol dragster the mellow yellow series and all the lucas oil series categories we're going to connect with everybody as best as we can and you're not going to want to miss them in fact the archive is loaded as we speak big thanks shout out to our sponsors total seal piston rings samtech.edu Rodax, coffee and grills.com, magicdryus.com, and Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School. These people stepping up, doing a great job supporting WFO Radio. If you need a holiday gift idea, you just want to do something great with your life, we've got sponsors that make it happen for us and they make this show possible. You can find out more at their websites and certainly at WFORadio.com. All right, let's bring on our guest. Joining us now, she is the 2019 Lucas Oil Top Alcohol Dragster World Champion, Megan Meyer. Megan, welcome back to WFO Radio Podcast. Congratulations. Thank you, Joe. I'm glad to be back on WFO. And as a champion, this is something that was your goal for many years. I am proud that we were uh, you know, one of your first interviews ever uh, after getting your license. And uh, you know, here you are now. As we talked about back then, there was a defined goal, mission accomplished, goal achieved. Yeah, it seems like it was um, so long ago, but it was just four years ago when I just got started in top alcohol. And I mean, we've just made so many strides since then. It's just incredible to look back and see what we've gone through and, and where we are now. The idea that you knocked off a four-time consecutive champ, you know, Joey Severance has been amazing, and we've seen it over the years, like when that kind of dominance happens, it forces everybody to raise their game, and this year, uh, you weren't the only one that raised your game. You know, Shaw Cowie was out there, there were just so many really good cars, and you had to uh, fight it out for this championship. It was a, It was a battle. It was. Every race was a battle. Um, and looking back, it, it seems like I either raced DJ or Sean in the finals or was up against them quite a bit. And I noticed that Joey didn't do that great this year. So I don't know um, what was really going on in their camp. But it, it just gave us a chance to, to go more rounds and not have to really worry about severance, um, fortunately for us. But I know next year he'll be back stronger as well as the other guys, too. So we've got to really step up our game next year so we can defend the championship. So let's talk about the the season top to bottom. Uh, you know, you have had your eyes on the championship. Joey won last year. This year, guy, you guys came out of the box. We spoke with you at the start of the season, and you had a very ambitious schedule for Randy Meyer Racing, where uh, you know you, your sister Julie, uh, you know, m- multiple drivers all cycling through. Uh, your dad's cars while at the same time you're out there competing for a championship it was a very ambitious schedule and you came out of the box pretty strong yeah you know that's a great way to put it was ambitious because we you know of course we want to win championships and win races but when we do have five different drivers and we actually ran three different cars this year you never know what's going to happen And fortunately for us, we have really great guys on our team that took care of everything very well for us. Um, My dad always had great tune-ups in the cars, and we were able to have our most successful year ever this year, which we've been to the final round at every race except for two races in this year. And I believe we did uh, 27 or 28 races total. So that's just incredible for anybody in drag racing. Oh, yeah. Great, great success. Uh, your first race, the 50th Amelie Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals, a milestone 50th race. We spent the entire previous two years 
uh, promoting this race, what a big thing it was going to be. We had a massive crowd. The place was packed. You won the race, and uh, that's a huge milestone victory for you. And it was right at that point. It's like, all right, Sean Cowie won the Winter Nationals. You won the Gator Nationals, and here's this is the race. You and Sean Bellamere, by the way, won the Gator Nationals, ultimately the champs. Um, we should have known right there, but it was a big fight. Uh, mm-hmm. That set the tone for the for the season. Yes, it was a great race for us, and we've always had success at Gainesville. Uh, I, just because we get great weather down there, the track conditions are really w- well, so it's it's a great setup for a fuel cars. And it was my first time winning uh, Gainesville, and I I remember uh, in years past my dad winning it many times. So it's just really special for us um, to go there and win that race for a first time for me. And then also for it being the big 50th annual one, you know, it's so cool. I got the shiny gold trophy next to all the the bronze ones on the trophy or on the trophy cabinet now. Yes, you got to have one of those. Uh, Then, of course, you know, uh, Julie won some races. The four wide nationals, Julie was actually able to take the win. Um, And so you did not uh, go back to back at your sponsors race, but you won the Gator Nationals. You won the Chevrolet Performance U.S. Nationals, and that a career-making victory unto itself, right? You go out there, final round, and thinking about big races along the way, that was a big one when it came down to the championship. It was. That one meant the most to us other than winning Charlotte in the fall where we ultimately got the championship, too. Um, But, yeah, my dad has just – tried for so long to win the U.S. Nationals, and he's originally from southern Indiana, so we have a lot of friends and family that come up to Indy to come and watch us race, and we have big sponsorship stuff going on that weekend, too, so there's a lot of pressure on us, Um, but I, you know, to to really say that we got lucky is so true because um, I think PJ might have outran us in that final round, but he, he turned that red light on. So um, it was our lucky day. And a lot of times in drag racing, all you need is luck. And, um, you know, we were just so happy for our team. Um, what was really cool also that weekend is that my sister got to race and it was her first time at the U.S. Nationals. And she made it to the semifinals, and we got to run against each other. And it was um, it's so fun. I absolutely love racing against my sister because we try so hard to beat each other more than anybody else we're racing against. Um, and obviously, I got the win over her. Um, but we've raced against each other at least three times, maybe four times um, this season, which is just crazy because we never even did at all in the top alcohol class until last year when we raced against each other twice. And um, so I'm proud to say that I've beat her every time except once. She beat me um, this year at the Bell Rose, Louisiana divisional or regional race. And it was in the final round. So she got the win over me and won the race. And it was her, uh, I believe it was her first win um, for this year. And she finished up second in regional points behind me with that win. Wow. Great. I noticed you're like, I beat her every single time, except for that one time that she beat me. Uh, yeah, except for once. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she's, uh, you know, she's uh, doing very well, and I fully anticipate her to continue her career. I'll ask you that at the end. But just like going over, uh, you know, my memory banks and the results, uh, you mentioned TJ went red in the final at Indy, but you guys had met in the final round at Brainerd couple weeks before and the roles were reversed right like so this was a slugfest you guys a nice group of young intense competitors hammering on each other uh over the the final you know half of the season yes it was um yeah and that red light that i had in brainerd really um hurt us but we were able to make up those points um from getting runner-up um but yeah you know it's always so devastating turning on the red light especially in the final round um and you know what it just it happens it's happened to me many times before so i'm i know that that's just racing and i got to just shake it off and move on to the next one after that um but yeah you know tj and the mick phillips guys they have really uh turned things around and really have stepped up their program this year so 
looking forward to what they're going to do next year now that they have a new car that they're going to bring out. Very interesting. Well, yeah, next year is going to be just epic. And, and, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing there's not a category out there that it's like, ah, that's not good. There's not good competition in that category. Top to bottom, alcohol, funny car, alcohol, dragster, comp eliminator. It's just been amazing. And let's go down to the uh, the championship. It comes down to the wire. You're able to be crowned champion. Then you go out to Dallas and you win the next race also. Just great, great stuff. But uh, for the audience out there, you had a, a very strong season. But there has to be some moments of struggle behind the scenes that maybe we were not aware of. Um, highlight some points over the course of the season, uh, you know, other than wins that mattered to you, that stuck out, that maybe were a point that uh, maybe rallied you or or made you dig deeper that uh, we didn't necessarily see uh, out there. Well, the first one that comes to mind is the Topeka National event, and in, in the that was in June. It's actually my birthday weekend. And we did horrible there. I mean, we qualified really badly, both lost first round, like worst weekend ever. And, um, you know, a lot of it just comes down to the fact that we were distracted and not focused because all our friends were there and, and family and people, you know, that we invited that had never been to a track before. So they show up, they have no idea where to go. They want us to take them everywhere and put them on the starting line. It's like, no, no, no. Like we've got to focus on the car and go race and do our own stuff. So um, we just got behind the ball that weekend and um, had a horrible outing. So then the next race, um, you know, we made sure to put everything back to where it needed to be. So that way we would come out on top again. And, you know, in the years past, my dad always is trying new stuff, whether it's little or big, he's always trying to you know, get that one step ahead of everybody else. And sometimes it, it hasn't worked in the past. And I remember that happened to us last year at Topeka. We changed some stuff with the fuel lines and thought it would be, you know, this really awesome new setup did not work at all. So we had to change everything back. So, you know, there's times this year where we tried stuff, it didn't work, tried stuff, it didn't make any difference at all, or we tried stuff and it did make a difference. Um, and fortunately for this year, we didn't really hurt many parts at all. Um, our biggest one that happened was in Brainerd and um, on Julie's car. She blew up a motor and um, also hurt some body panels on the car, too. So it, it did a lot of damage. But um, that was, to be honest, that was like the worst damage that we've had um, this year. And I remember like years past where we blow up motors multiple times in a year whereas this year we, we're really um watching the parts and making notes of how many runs are on each part you know when is the time to, that they're starting to get worn out so we can take them out and replace them with something fresh so that way we don't end up blowing up the motor and spending a lot of money on parts so um, our guys were really careful about that this year, and, and we're, they're just always watching everything. So very thankful for them and um, for my dad, you know, seeing that and making the changes. Um, but we did have a lot of uh, drama go on in our pits this year. And um, unfortunately, some of our guys have left our team, and they won't be with us next year. And um, I'm not sure if they're – going to be with other teams next year or what they're going to do if they're going to stay in drag racing or not um but yeah there's just there's a lot of uh drama and headache that was going on um just between personal relationships that we really struggled with um but as soon as i got into the car and the car started up you know we just let that all go away and just focus on the race and um you know we did our best and it, it shows, um, but there's a lot behind the scenes that um, was really hard for us. Wow. Well, I, you know, the highs of the high and the lows of the low. I, well, I can imagine, though, you said you did 26 events, right? Is that the, the schedule? Like that's 
don't want to say it's crazy because it's not crazy. It's work, right? You guys got to, this is a business for you. Randy Meyer Racing is a race team and you're out to win a championship, but also uh, it has to be a business so that you guys can continue to do that. And that's how you guys are running it and giving a lot of young racers um, an opportunity to, to go out and get early laps and pursue their dreams. I think of Julie and others. Um, it's got to be tough, right? Like life on the road. That's got to be tough. It's very tough, especially just being away from your families. Um, you know, all of our guys are married and have kids. And so it's, I know it's so hard for them being away. And so we try to fly them in as much as we can. So that way they can spend more time at home or at working with their families and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so there'll be some changes next year for us, and we're still figuring that out. We don't know exactly um, what's going to happen for Randy Meyer Racing next year. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you, I mean, obviously it sounds like you're right in the middle of it, so I don't want to pry as into, you know, who's coming back, who's not coming back, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I know you've got a couple of crew guys that are very well known and that they've been, uh, you know, there. You thank them in, in the in the banquet and the awards ceremony and all. Uh, are you still sorting it out? And knowing our listeners, they probably want to know if you're accepting applications. <laughs> um, yes, we are accepting applications, um, but we do prefer someone that's around Kansas City or, or kind of local to us. So that way it's just easier um, for work and everything. Um, but no, we're, we are right in the middle of it. I mean, things just happened a couple of weeks ago for us. So we're still figuring things out. Um, and I'm, I'm for sure racing again next year. Um, I re-signed with NGK. We're actually going to announce that at PRI next week. Um, Lucas Oil is back on with us. So um, I for sure will be back next year doing a full season to try to defend my title and get it again. Uh, Rachel will be back next year as well. Um, obviously, she'll probably be doing the same amount of races that she did this year, um, if not a little bit more, um, just because if she all it just all depends on what vacation time she can use from her job. Um, but that's about all that we know right now. Um, we're still waiting on Julie to hear back if she's going to return. Um, she's still working on sponsorship stuff and. Uh, visa stuff that she has to go through to see if she can stay in the country. Uh, I know Camry is working on sponsorship stuff and she's trying to get back into the car. And then uh, Matt Sackman is also um, with Hanks to Furs. I think they are pretty solid on their sponsorship deal. So we're just waiting to hear back from them how many races and which ones that he would want to go to. Um, and then, you know, there's always works of bringing new drivers into our cars so we just have a lot on our plate right now (laughs) yeah you guys definitely have a well the word ambitious right like it's uh you got a lot going on but it paid big dividends you won a world championship you got engaged this year which is uh big news Mm -hmm. on the personal level this was uh you know when you look back at 2019 20 years from now this is going to be a big year for you it is for sure you know it's even though we've had all this drama and all this stuff behind the scenes that was really negative for us, there's so much positive. And I mean, we did so well this year racing and um, you know, it's just a happy year to go to look back on. Wow. Now what about let's, let's go down a different road, which is you're the first female top alcohol dragster world champion in a year where, you know, Erica becomes a three-time pro stock world champion and Allison Dahl becomes a stock eliminator world champion. It's like, uh, it's a really cool thing that has happened in drag racing where, you know, being a lady racer is not really special anymore. Everybody is just racing and some are, you know, men and some are women and some are black and some are white. And, you know, it doesn't matter. None of, none of that matters in what is the, uh, the ultimate uh, competition out there. You know, it doesn't matter as long as you can show up and afford to race and race. Uh, That having been said, you're the first, which is unique. That's uh, that's a a first time thing. How, you know, how do you feel about that uh, milestone? Oh, I love it. And I agree 100% with everything you said. Um, You know, I always tell people the car has no idea what your gender, age, race, whatever. The car doesn't know who's driving it. It just knows that it's going to go fast. So we're just along for the ride. And, um, you know, it's it's so cool to be able to say that I'm the first female. Um, I'm very proud of that. And that's the title that I will 
hold on to forever. And I know there's a lot of girls in our sport that, you know, they say that they don't like those types of titles, but I say embrace it and use it as much as you can. I mean, especially when you're trying to get a sponsorship, they want to hear stuff like that. So it's just so cool to be able to, to have that honor um, but, you know, I always thought that there would have been other females to get it before me, like Ashley Forrest. I mean, she did so great in the top alcohol class, and she used to be the winningest female um, in the sportsman series until I passed her up. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's just so cool to be able to to have my name down in the history books next to so many legends like Joey Severance and Jim Whiteley and Bill Reichert and all those guys. I mean, I've looked up to them all my life and it's cool to say, hey, I'm one of them now. Yeah, you are. You are one of them. All right, there's a different subject. Ready? You are going to do, or maybe you're already doing, or you're about to do, or maybe you have decided to not do a social media detox. You are going to disconnect from social media. (laughs) You are very well known for being very involved in social media. Instagram, your page is, uh, you know, going like crazy, all kinds of good photographs all the time. Love your office, by the way. That's really nice and clean and organized. I don't know how you do that, but that's amazing. Um, But now you're going to put it all down. I would love to be able to do this. I say all the time, if I could hang, get rid of, uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and still connect with all of my people... I would do it in a second. How's it going? What are you doing? What has inspired you to do this? Well, it's only been, let's see, today's the fourth. So it's been four days so far. Um, And it's actually been really nice. Um, It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time just because I get burnt out really easily on social media. And I feel like I have to post stuff just to post it, just to make sure, you know, people are seeing us on there. And it got to a point where I didn't love it anymore. You know, I I actually, like, hated opening up Facebook and Instagram. And it was just such a time suck for me just scrolling and looking at other people's lives and, and, you know, wasting time with my life. So I decided to take a break, and um, I have really enjoyed it so far. And then also just all this drama that I mentioned, you know, Um, it's just, everything is just adding up on my plate and something needed to go to, to bring more room in. So, so that was, um, you know, that was a thing that I decided that I would take a break from for a couple of weeks and I haven't really missed it at all. Um, I am still using the Rainy My Racing pages, so those are still active. Um, I used to have someone that did that for me, but they also left our team so now it's back to me doing it um but yeah you know I've I've really enjoyed taking this break to unplug and really focus on what's going on at home being present we just had Thanksgiving and we just had a big party at our house to celebrate the championship and a lot of our crew guys came in for that party um plus all of our family from Indiana came down so it was so cool just to be able to be with them not worry about being on my phone the whole time or taking any pictures at all. I think I took like three pictures the whole night. So, um, so yeah, it's been very refreshing. Um, and I am, you know, I'm on my phone for less than like a third of the time now than I used to. I used to be on my phone for like four or five hours in a day. Now I'm on my phone for like one, maybe two hours a day total. And I've noticed that I've been spending all of my time on Amazon shopping. So (laughs) I don't know if Adam will enjoy this break because all our money is going away. But um, I really enjoyed it. And so um, I'm just excited for next year. I've got all these ideas that I want to do. I just haven't really had time to implement them and strategize and think them through. So I'm really using this time to focus on what are we going to do next year? How are we going to make things different? How are we going to, you know, make things bigger and better and more interactive and more um, communication, more promotion for sponsors and all that stuff. So I think it's been really good and healthy. And I think everyone should do it at some point every year. Well, listen, no, I, I, uh, as soon as I saw that, I thought it was very interesting. I I have thought of deleting my whole Facebook account. And just getting away from it, right? Because I feel like in many ways it's toxic, except 
it's some of it is toxic, just like life, right? There's some toxic people on there, but not all of them. A lot of them are nice, wonderful people, and so I don't want to lose my connection to them, but it's not even really that. It's all those great photographs that are on there, like the proof that I existed is on there, right? Like I went here, and I saw this, and I did that, and every once in a while it pops up, and I can connect with anybody on there at any time. It's like that is what I like, but at the same time, I, I, I think that they have too much power. So I saw what you're doing. And I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it just gives us more opportunity to um, to grow our audience and really connect with them on other platforms. So um, like after PRI show next week, I'll be posting a blog of mine on Drag Illustrated, recapping the show and um, posting about it on my newsletter. And so it's just more opportunities for people to lean um more towards that to figure out like what's going on with Megan Meyer and what she up to other than social media so it'll be interesting to see if that grows over December interesting no I I agree I agree all right fi- final question in that uh you know you, I always hit you like you know trying to get you to go to the mellow yellow series and the last time we spoke you put the brakes on it you're like no man I'm gonna stay in the alcohol ranks <laughs> because I love well you did and it was uh, it was good I appreciate that right like I want to we do have some challenges in our sport in that it costs a lot of money especially at the highest levels and not everybody can just uh, you know corporate sponsorship is here and there uh, but We need healthy drag racing at all levels, not just one category or the other. And so you've been very strong in your support of the top alcohol ranks, both uh, Funny Car and Dragster. You speak about them together, and that's a good point. Um, The health of them, right? Like top alcohol dragster, top alcohol Funny Car, I feel like it's in a really good spot right now. And we're trying very hard to get people who are fans of other classes namely the mellow yellow series to stay in the stands and watch the alcohol ranks but it's been kind of cool the past few years i feel like the racing has not been more wide open and exciting you know you think of all the years that frank manzo just dominated the championship every single year well that's not happening uh in top alcohol funny car as much as sean won back to back and and dragster you know sean uh, uh, uh joey won last four in a row that's manzo like but those were very close years And now you broke through. And next year, who knows? Maybe you'll go back to back. Maybe you'll have to fight someone to the end. What do you think about where the the alcohol categories are right now? And what would you like to see to make them better? I agree. They're healthy and growing right now. Um, I mean, we're seeing so many people, even just through our camp, that want to get into the class. And whether they want to move up to top fuel or not, you know, um, it's it's very interesting to see it it grow the way that it is growing because I've noticed that there isn't really more teams coming on. It's more of just the old guys are retiring and renting out their car to new drivers. And, you know, we're a prime example of that. And it's just, it's so interesting to see that because years ago, you know, that wasn't really the thing. Um, I think it's good for the sport, uh, but there is some, I don't know how to say this, um, but we've noticed that the drivers that are coming through don't really um, get very involved in the sport um, as far as like knowing about the cars and knowing about the class and all that stuff. Um, You know, we've had a lot of people come through our camp and, you know, they didn't even know where a finish line was. It's like, okay, you need more training. Um, You need more seat time, obviously. But then we get people that's like, they don't know how to air up a tire. They don't even know how to put fuel in the car. It's like, to me, I'm all confused. It's like, why do you want to be a driver if you don't even know anything about the car? But they're just there to have fun and go fast and, you know, They've got sponsors, so they want to help them out. Um, it's just, it's very diverse um, of where the sport used to be years ago. So I think it's it's great because it's growing, it's working. Um, and a prime example is that we're going to be racing four wide next year, which is so cool. And I'm so excited for that. Um, my sister said that she wants to come to Charlotte just so we can race four wide together. 
And, you know, I'm so excited for that, especially with it being the NGK Nationals, of course. Um, and also Charlotte's our favorite track, obviously. So, yeah, it's just it's growing um, and it's different. But I think that's what we need um, because, you know, everything's always changing, always evolving. So it's just interesting to see where it's going at and how those drivers are going to be when they if they do move up. Absolutely. And hear that, everybody. Megan Meyer, Rachel Meyer are excited to go racing four or wide. You need to realize that this is something that, uh, you know, that a lot of people do like and want to do and want to compete in. And it's out of the ordinary and only happens twice a year. So get with it. Right. And you guys, when I when I heard that was going to happen. And I, I got to hear and understand, uh, like, I felt like it was going to happen, but until it was announced, I wasn't 100% certain. But next year, they are they have gone all in on the four wide at the four wide tracks. The heads up categories are running four wide. Yes, I'm so excited for that. Um, but I will only get to do it in Charlotte because we are not going to Vegas since I'm getting married that weekend. <laughs> well, you're getting married in Vegas, and then you're going to run right to the track and run, right? No. No. no, 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 we are not. No. All right. All right. Well, listen, it, uh, it works for some people. Others, not so much. Megan, congratulations on winning your world championship. I know this has been your goal since you first joined us on WFO radio. When you first got your license following your career uh, has been a, a whole lot of fun. And, you know, you said, wow, it's only been four years and you think about it. But it has been a large percentage of your life that you have been chasing this goal. And now you've accomplished it. I know you got great people behind you. I know Layla at NGK loves you to death. Uh, one of the great things about winning in was I, I got to stand right next to her on the starting line and watch her go berserk, uh, you know, knowing mm-hmm. that her investment had paid off and that you had now accomplished the, like the biggest things in drag racing, right? You won Indy, you won the championship. Uh, you know, your dad is always kind, gives me some behind the scenes insight into what's going on. I really appreciate that throughout. You always come on WFO whenever we, uh, we ask and we appreciate that. You've done a great job. Great to hear that you'll be racing again next year. However, it turns out with whoever it, you know, however it all works out, please let us know. Love to have you back after the turn of the year. What are you doing for the holidays though? Like you said, you're going to be, you know, PRI, we're all there, but what about after that? You got anything planned or are you just going to veg out? No, we usually, um, we'll do a winter trip like to Colorado or something like that. Go skiing, snowboarding um but since we are saving up for the wedding we're gonna not do a vacation this winter um and then just wait i am going on at my bachelorette party in january oh. we're going to florida so that'll be really fun um and mia tedesco's coming because she's one of my bridesmaids so i can't wait for that Miss and mia. um no yeah we're just gonna stay home this winter um and then you know get everything ready for next year we've got a lot on our plate Right now with the cars um, to get them ready to go for 2020. The bachelorette party is something I can't just let that go. I got to like, you're going to Florida. Are you going to <laughs> Disney? Are you going to the beach? What is the bachelorette plans for Megan Meyer? We're going to go down to Fort Myers uh-huh. um, and then bringing in all the girls with me. My sister at Marina Anderson coming. She's another bridesmaid. So yeah, it'll be a, a fun time. Oh, I'm sure it will be a fun time. I'm sure you guys will have a <laughs> great time and you guys are going to wreak havoc. And uh, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll be on the look, look out for the newspapers from Fort Myers <laughs> on that given weekend for headlines. Of course, Megan, congratulations. Thanks for coming on WFO. Thank you again, Joe. Always appreciate it. There she goes, Megan Meyer, with us here on WFO Radio. Couldn't help but notice she said the word drama a few times. I'm interested to uh, see how it all plays out going into 2020 with that team. Uh, it, it is always uh, There's always drama, but it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out with that Randy Meyer racing team going into 2020. And uh, I appreciate Megan laying it all out there in this championship interview. She won the championship. That was a life goal for her. We did one of her very first interviews. In fact, it might have been her very first. It is in the archive. You can dig back in WFO Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on the website in particular, and uh, check out some of the stuff. But now to see her become a champion, that is just great. And I appreciate it. feel like I've been there for the whole thing, for the most part. 
And thanks to Megan for coming on the show. And this week, we've had great guests. It has been a lot of fun. Alan Reinhardt, of course, Andrew Hines, Megan Meyer. Next week, we're going to have Sean Bellamere and Ray Miller III. So you're not going to want to miss that. Click subscribe and never miss a show. And all of you folks that are listening to WFO on a regular basis, The Ignition Show, something you're definitely going to want to check out. We've been having so much fun in the winter break. Just stream of consciousness is really what it is. We say it's a NASCAR show. You know what? If I say it's a NASCAR show, half the people out there say, I don't like NASCAR and I'm not going to listen to it. So it's not really that, but we do cover NASCAR. We talk about the hot topics and the stories, but it has been overwhelmed by so many other subjects. Whether it be we follow Haas F1, whether it be our own antics, whatever it be. And we are across the board. I do not think we spend more than five minutes on any one subject at any given time for the most part. And so stream of consciousness was thrown out there by a friend, the race Sherpa. And he is uh, he's right. It's what it is. And we've been doing it for a long time. Got a lot of listeners. It is the carryover from my talk radio days. Go check that out. Go check out Ignition. And you can find out what happened to Giovanni this week and why he was stuck on the side of the road. Also, don't forget, if you're looking for great gifts, our sponsors, Total Seal Piston Rings, of course, for the engine builder in your life, samtech.edu, magicdryus.com, the official organic absorbent of the NHRA, Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, the Dragster Adventure in particular, and of course, Rodax Coffee and Grills.com. I got one more for you, though. Nitrofishracing.com, where you can pick up your own WFO Radio Podcast 10th Year Anniversary shirt. That's right, that 10th Anniversary t-shirt. The 10th Anniversary is about to be over. Get your WFO 10th Anniversary t-shirt wide open. And rock your WFO t-shirt in 2020 at all the NHRA drag races, like so many of us do on Saturdays. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. Great week on WFO. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate all of you. And we'll have more WFO in the weeks to come. Click subscribe. We'll see you then. WFO! The views and opinions of the hosts, guests, or callers do not necessarily reflect that of the station ownership, advertisers, or agencies. I love WFO radio. Oh, yeah. Hey everybody, how do you start your day? You started off with a little coffee. And do you want something cheap and vacuum packed with garbage? Do you want to pay for a retail coffee? It's like eleven dollars. Or do you want something that is good, like Rodax Coffee and Grills.com? Join the Rodax Army. WFO users and listeners know all about it. Over 40 grades to choose from. This is roasted fresh for your order, not to mention hot sauce, spice rub. You gotta call Marvin. Get on the phone line or go to the website, RoadaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. Check it out. That's RoadaxCoffeeAndGrills.com. Start your education at full speed with the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. Accelerate your career as a high-performance engine builder with classroom instruction and practical hands-on experience in the lab, on the dyno, and at the track. In addition to the block, head, and CNC programs, Sam now offers motorsport, EFI tuning, and an Associates of Applied Science degree. And Sam is a military-friendly school, approved to train veterans and other eligible persons under the GI Bill. Start your education at full speed. Go to samtech.edu today. Hey, WFO Universe, want something for free? Send a self-addressed stamped envelope with plenty of postage and we'll load it up with free WFO stickers. That's right, I said free. Send your envelope, care of Castello Media, slash WFO stickers to P.O. Box 848-353, Pembroke Pines, Florida, 33084. Do it now. This is WFO Radio.